on behalf of the friends and family of Nisei veterans, we are honored to tell you the story of the most decorated unit in the history of the United States Army. The 442nd Regimental Combat Team comprised mainly of Japanese Americans. The story of the 442nd starts on December 7, 1941. On that day, this couple was celebrating the happiest day of their life, their wedding day. Like many Japanese Americans in Southern California, the couple celebrated their wedding with a reception in the Little Tokyo section of Los Angeles. However, the joyousness of the occasion was interrupted by agents of the FBI. Various guests were arrested, mainly community and civic leaders. This scene was repeated up and down the coast and in Hawaii at various events. This was all due to the attack on the United States Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor earlier in the day by the Naval and Air Forces of Japan. In spite of the attack, Japanese Americans tried to prove their loyalty to the United States. However, the hatred and xenophobia persisted and the racism could not be stopped. Even worse, some assumed that the Japanese Americans on the West Coast represented a military threat due to a perceived loyalty to Japan. To address the hatred, racism, and security concerns, President Franklin Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066 on February 19, 1942. Under the guise of military security, all Japanese Americans living within 500 miles of the West Coast were to be forcibly removed from their homes and property. Without due process of law and in violation of constitutional principles, President Roosevelt denied Japanese Americans their basic rights as American citizens and implied that Japanese Americans living on the West Coast were disloyal. With the issuance of Executive Order 9066, 120,000 Japanese Americans had six days to get their affairs in order. 80,000 were American-born Japanese with U.S. citizenship. These American citizens were called Nisei, or second generation. Explanations had to be given to children, the elderly, and those who were not fluent in English as to what was happening. Business owners, farmers, and employed persons had to quickly settle their affairs. And for the first generation Japanese Americans, or Issei, the uncertainty of what the future would hold would make them question whether their dreams for themselves and their family could ever come true. 120,000 Japanese Americans began to pack their belongings packing only what they could carry for a future of undetermined length to an unknown destination. They were loaded onto trains, surrounded by armed soldiers, and sent to various relocation centers. The relocation centers were mainly fairgrounds and horse racetracks. The Japanese American lived in horse stalls waiting sometimes for many months until the internment camps were built. Between 1942 and 1945, a total of 10 internment camps were opened in California, Arizona, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and Arkansas. The population of each camp ranged from 8 to 16,000 and were larger than many towns in the state or county in which it was located. The bulk of each camp were barracks, 100 foot long and 25 feet wide. Each had no interior walls, insulation, or indoor plumbing. Each barrack housed four families. Each family had 25 feet by 25 foot space, regardless of family size, be it small, or large. 
The internees ate in dining halls, bathed in community showers, and used public commodes. Each camp had elementary schools, junior high school, and high schools. Each camp tried to become self-sufficient and create diets familiar to their Japanese American palates. Along with administering camp affairs, and meeting the health needs of the attorneys. The Japanese Americans tried to create some semblance of life before internment camp with athletic leagues, entertainment, and holiday celebrations. However, there were constant reminders of their plight, of being prisoners in their own land, having committed no other crime than to be of Japanese ancestry. Through these dark times emerged a unit that showed the loyalty and honor of the Japanese Americans, the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. The 442nd almost never came to be. After Pearl Harbor, all Japanese American men of draft age, except those already serving in the armed forces, were classified as 4C enemy aliens forbidden to serve their country. However, under pressure from civil liberties organizations, President Roosevelt authorized the enlistment of Japanese American men into the U.S. Armed Forces on February 13, 1943. The story of the 442nd, however, is not complete without telling the story of the 100th Battalion. The 100th Battalion was originally the Hawaiian Provisional Infantry Battalion, established in May 1942, a segregated unit mainly of Japanese Americans. In June 1942, the 1,432 officers and enlisted men were renamed the 100th Battalion and would undergo training in Wisconsin, Mississippi, and Louisiana while military officers decided what to do with these men. As a regimental combat team, the 442nd was a self-sufficient fighting unit consisting of three infantry battalions, the 522nd Field Artillery Battalion, the 232nd Engineer Company, an I-10 Company, Cannon Company, Service Company, Medical Detachment, Headquarters Companies, and the 206th Army Band. The 442nd was an all-volunteer unit consisting of Caucasian officers and Japanese-American enlisted men. The initial unit included 2,900 Japanese-Americans from Hawaii and 800 from the mainland. In April 1943, the two groups arrived at Camp Shelby near Hattiesburg, Mississippi and immediately clashed. The Hawaiians became known as Buta heads for the Japanese word Buta or pig. The mainlanders became known as Katonks for the sound of an empty coconut hitting the ground or more likely the sound of a head hitting a wall during a fist fight. The Hawaiians thought the mainlanders were sullen and unfriendly. The mainlanders found the Hawaiians to be impulsive and crude and while the mainlanders spoke standard English, the Hawaiians spoke pidgin. Money was another source of division. The Hawaiians gambled heavily and spent freely. They thought the mainlanders were cheap, not realizing that the mainlanders sent most of their pay to their families in internment camp. Fist fights happened frequently, and the friction between the two groups was so extreme that the high command considered disbanding the unit. In order to defuse the situation, the commanding officer arranged a weekend visit to a nearby internment camp at Aurora, Arkansas. The Hawaiians set out for Aurora, singing, strumming their ukuleles, and expecting a good time. But the Hawaiians were shocked when the buses rolled past the barbed wire fence, past the guard tower armed with machine guns, pointed at the center residence, past the tar paper barracks, where whole families crowded into small compartments with no privacy. The girls at the dance seemed lighthearted, 
hiding the circumstances of their life. On the ride back to Camp Shelby, the bus was quiet. For the first time, the Hawaiians understood the soldiers from the mainland, who rarely talked about the camps and the forced evacuation. After the visit, the fighting stopped. The 442nd became known for their cohesiveness as much for their valor. The unit adopted Go For Broke as a slogan, a phrase used by the Hawaiians. By segregating Japanese Americans, the Army created an elite fighting unit. Most of the soldiers were older and better educated than the average soldier, and they were highly qualified. In September 1943, the 100th Battalion sailed to Italy. The first casualty occurred on September 29, 1943. Sergeant Joe Takata was killed when he advanced toward hidden enemy gunners. In January 1944, the 100th Battalion was fighting to capture Monte Cassino, which controlled the main highway to Rome. A Benedictine Abbey was located at the top of Monte Cassino. On the slopes below, the Germans had created machine gun nests and had chopped down trees, giving them unobstructed views of advancing troops. The nearby river was dammed. Artillery and machine gun fire rained down on anyone attempting to cross the river. The 100th Battalion was ordered to make several charges. Despite their efforts, they were unable to capture Monte Cassino, and after two more attempts, an airstrike was ordered to level the Abbey. Five divisions were able to break through after two major assaults. The devastating battle at Monte Cassino marked the end of the original 100th Battalion. The battalion landed in Italy with 1,300 men. Five months later, only 521 remained fit to fight. War correspondents referred to the 100th as the Purple Heart Battalion. The 100th Battalion eventually became part of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. In June 1944, the 100th Battalion was assigned to clear out enemy strongholds on the road to Rome. By June 3rd, the 100th accomplished their task, but seven miles from Rome, the 100th was ordered to stop. Feeling that racial prejudice played a factor, the 100th watched as other Allied troops headed to Rome and to receive a hero's welcome. On September 27, 1944, the 442nd left for a new mission in France. On October 14, 1944, the 442nd headed toward the town of Briers. Briers was surrounded by a series of hills. The 100th Battalion was ordered to capture Hill A. The 442nd was ordered to capture Hill B and push through a valley into the town. The 442nd and 100th Battalion battled continuously in wet and freezing weather for four days, finally defeating enemy forces on October 19, 1944. After suffering for four years under German occupation, the citizens of Briers never forgot the Nisei soldiers who liberated their town. The gratitude continues to this day. On October 26, 1944, after liberating Briers, Bifontaine, and Belmont, the 442nd was ordered to rescue members of the 36th Texas Division, later to be called the Lost Battalion. Basically a suicide mission, for two days, the 442nd slowly advanced. On the third day, the 442nd made numerous charges against German positions entrenched in steep ridges. In spite of constant fire, the 442nd continued their charge of what became known as Suicide Hill. On the fourth day, the 442nd broke through to the Lost Battalion. 211 of the 275 members of the Lost Battalion were rescued. However, this rescue came at a terrible price. 
I Company, which started with 186 members, only had eight standing. K Company, st which also started with 186 members, only had 17 standing. In 1962, Texas Governor John Conley made all members of the 442nd and 100th Battalion honorary Texans for their roles in saving the lives of so many Texas soldiers. Many men of the two units kept in touch to honor their unique relationship, which was commemorated in Houston, Texas in 2009 with a Homecoming for Heroes reunion of the Lost Battalion and the 442nd and 100th Battalion. From November 1944 to March 1945, the 442nd 100th Battalion headed south to the French Riviera. The 442nd had lost so many men that it could not be used as a regiment-sized force. Nearly 2,000 wounded were in hospitals in Italy, France, England, and the United States. In March 1945, the 442nd minus the 522nd Artillery Battalion left to join the African-American 92nd Infantry Division, otherwise known as the Buffalo Soldiers. Till the end of the war in May 1945, the 442nd broke the Gothic Line and drove the German Army up the Italian coast. In March 1945, the 522nd Artillery Battalion separated from the 442nd and was sent out as a roving battalion to help out other units. On April 29, 1945, advanced scouts from the 522nd Artillery Battalion were traveling through the small Bavarian town of Lager Leckfield. There, the 522nd stumbled on barracks encircled by barbed wire. Realizing this appeared to be a prison facility, they broke open the gates. There they confronted a harrowing scene. Prisoners wearing prison suits and red caps, shuffling weakly. They were like skeletons, all skin and bones. The 522nd had liberated 3,000 prisoners of the Koffering 4 Herlock subcamp of Dachau. The irony is that Japanese Americans from U.S. concentration camps were liberating Jewish prisoners in German concentration camps. On May 2, 1945, soldiers from the 522nd saw an open field with several lumps in the snow, which turned out to be Jewish prisoners who had been shot or left to die from exposure. Then the 522nd encountered hundreds of emaciated prisoners who were barely alive and roaming aimlessly across the countryside, their Nazi guards having abandoned them to flee the approaching 522nd. For the next three days, the 522nd soldiers carried the Jewish survivors into houses and barns, giving them blankets, water, and food until medical personnel arrived. Shortly thereafter, on May 8, 1945, the war in Europe ended, and the 442nd 100th Battalion came home. The efforts of the 442nd and other Japanese Americans in World War II resulted in many individual honors. 9,486 Purple Hearts, 21 Congressional Medals of Honor, 52 Distinguished Service Crosses, 1 Distinguished Service Medal, 560 Silver Stars, and 28 Oak Leaf Clusters in lieu of a second Silver Star, 4,000 Bronze Stars, and 1,200 Oak Leaf Clusters in lieu of a second Bronze Star. The 442nd also received 15 Soldiers Medals. The French government awarded 12 Croix de Guerre and two palms representing a second Croix de Guerre. The Italian government presented two crosses for military merit and two medals for military valor.
However, all the honors came with a price. Along with the many wounded in battle, 686 members of the 442nd, 100th Battalion, made the ultimate sacrifice. In spite of the 442nd's exemplary service, decoration, and sacrifices, the attitudes of the general population in the United States did not change towards people of Japanese ancestry after World War II. Veterans were welcomed home by signs that read, No Japs Allowed and No Japs Wanted. They were denied service in shops and restaurants, and their homes and property vandalized. Although the war ended, the battle continued. The American Legion refused to allow Nisei veterans into their group and removed Japanese American soldiers from their honor rolls. It was not until Caucasian officers from the 442nd Regiment intervened that the Legion began to accept Nisei veterans into the organization. Many Nisei veterans had difficulty finding houses in the continental United States. Due to the housing shortage, many Nisei veterans resorted to using federal housing programs. However, the resilience of the Nisei veterans was beginning to show. Many Nisei veterans used the GI Bill as an opportunity to attend universities and colleges. Many Nisei veterans became doctors, dentists, architects, scientists, and engineers. However, the 442nd Regiment had one very important supporter. On July 15, 1946, the 442nd Regiment marched down Constitution Avenue to the ellipse south of the White House. There, President Harry Truman honored the regiment by awarding them the Presidential Unit Citation and said the following, You fought for the free nations of the world along with the rest of us. I congratulate you on that, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate the privilege of being able to show you how much the United States of America thinks of what you have done. You are now on your way home. You fought not only the enemy, but you fought prejudice, and you won. Keep up that fight, and we will continue to win. To make this great republic stand for just what the Constitution says it stands for, the welfare of all the people, all the time. On August 18, 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed the Civil Liberties Act of 1988. The act offered a formal apology and granted reparations to Japanese Americans who had been interned during World War II. The act granted each surviving internee $20,000 in compensation. The legislation stated that government actions had been based on race prejudice, war hysteria, and a failure of political leadership as opposed to legitimate security reasons. 82,219 of the original 120,000 internees live to receive redress checks. Although 21 Congressional Medals of Honor have been awarded, only one soldier, Private First Class Sadao Munemori of the 100th Battalion, had received the Medal of Honor for his actions during World War II. In April 1946, a year after he was killed in action, the Distinguished Service Cross Private Munamori had been awarded was upgraded to the Medal of Honor. More than 50 years after the war ended, legislation sponsored by Senator Daniel Akaka of Hawaii resulted in the military's upgrading of 19 Distinguished Service Crosses and one silver star awarded to members of the 442nd 100th Battalion to the Medal of Honor. On June 21, 2000, President Bill Clinton awarded 20 Medals of Honor to members of the 442nd 100th Battalion. 13 were awarded posthumously. President Clinton stated, they risked their lives above and beyond the call of duty. And in so doing, they did more than defend America. In the face of painful prejudice, 
They help define America at its best. In 2010, Congress approved the granting of the Congressional Gold Medal to the 442nd and Associated Units who served in World War II. And in 2012, all surviving members of the 442nd and the 100th Battalion were made Chevaliers, or Knights of the French Legion of Honor, for their actions contributing to the liberation of France and the rescue of the Lost Battalion. In future presentations, we will present the role of the Military Intelligence Service, Japanese American men and women who served in the Pacific during World War II and helped with the occupation of Japan after the war. If you wish to learn more about the Japanese American experience in World War II, along with the 442nd and the Military Intelligence Service, please visit our exhibit at the USS Hornet Museum located in Alameda, California. And visit us at our website at ffnv.org. Thank you very much.